Robert Heinlein famously said that there were three kinds of human interest stories. Here's the quote. There are three main plots for the human interest story. Boy meets girl, the little tailor, and the man who learned better. So in other words, he's saying that there are three kinds of ways that a person can change in relation to other people. That's the human interest element. And he contrasts that to a gadget story. And I would say also you can contrast that to a travel story. Gulliver's Travels kind of story where you go from one crazy society to another. And all you're doing is giving a travelogue of your adventures in these other places. It's not necessarily about personal change. The person who is the observer traveling doesn't change. That's one kind of story. The person using a gadget, it's about what does the gadget do? How does it operate in society? That's another kind of story where it doesn't necessarily require personal change. A lot of science fiction is of, of that nature. There's also the detective, the mystery story. Detectives do not have to grow. They don't have to have a personal character arc. They have to solve a mystery. So the progress in the detective story is about solving a mystery. But most modern literature will always combine one of these other kinds of stories with a human interest story. That is, you don't have to have your detective grow and change, but a lot of times you want some growth and some change. If you have an ongoing series where there's many episodes, you can't have too much change because you need your characters to have a certain stability. So sometimes you will have somebody else in the story grow and change or somebody else in the story establish a relationship. So you have to think in terms of what, how long is my story arc? If I'm going to have a long series of episodes, obviously I would have a different kind of growth or change story than if I'm going to have one single long story arc. But to get back to Heinlein's point, the relationship that your character has can be one of three kinds. Boy meets girl doesn't necessarily actually have to be about a boy or a girl. And I'm not just talking about you could have a gay romance, obviously. But what I mean is that the romance doesn't even have to be a romance. It doesn't even have to be romantic. Basically what this means is the person establishes a new relationship. A classic example would be Wreck-It Ralph, where two video game characters establish a friendship. Wreck-It Ralph, who is a villain, he's cast as a villain in his story, and he behaves like a villain. He destroys things, and he wants to change that, or he wants to be recognized as a hero outwardly, and he realizes he has to change inwardly for that to happen. And part of what what triggers his change, part of what allows him to become the true hero instead of a villain is he establishes a relationship. It is not a romantic relationship. It would be gross if it were because he's an adult male and he establishes a friendship with a little girl. Fortunately, they're both cartoon characters, so there's nothing gross. Although if you want to see this done tastefully and not in a gross, you know, you way, you could also see the character on Game of Thrones where, was it, the Onion Knight has this friendship for the little girl who whose own parents are not really looking out for her. So he's like a foster dad to her. And I think there's a classic movie, Father Goose or Mother Goose, about a guy who's living on an island and there's some French orphans from World War II. And he kind of becomes an adopted father to him, to the children. And any one of those bringing up baby or there's a, you know, bachelor finds baby and has to take care of baby, those kind of things. The last person who would be able to take care of a child finds a child. That's actually a very old trope and it does not have to be creepy. Oh, it says so much of our society that I have to say that it doesn't have to be creepy. That's, that's sad. Anyway, so Wreck-It Ralph has a, a very nice friendship. And the reason I have to emphasize it's not creepy is because I'm going to then say it follows the same rules as a romance, but I don't want that to be gross. It follows the same rules as a buddy cop movie, uh, which nowadays is called a bromance, which some people confuse for a gay romance. I don't think it is a gay romance. If it's a gay romance, it's just a romance, okay? That's just a love story. A bromance is different. They aren't sexually attracted to each other, but they have a relationship. They establish a relationship. But the beats, the story beats, the obligatory scenes that you need to have to realistically establish this changing relationship in the reader's mind, those are the same if you're talking about a friendship or if you're talking about a romance. And so that is the boy meets girl story or the friendship story if it's not a romance. And that is the first kind of relationship, human interest story that Heinlein talks about, a changing relationship. The second kind of human interest story Heinlein calls the little tailor. But this is actually just the classic coming of age story. Another way to look at it though would be the changing status story. Coming of age sometimes encompasses more than just a changing status, although it's definitely a classic trope of changing your status. You're going from child to adult. But there's other ways that you can have a change in status and that's what the little tailor captures. If you don't remember the story of the little tailor, he is 
<laughs> Disney has a version of this, but it's a classic fairy tale. There's a tailor. He's very poor. His hovel is filled with flies. He gets so fed up that he chases them all around with a fly swatter and he finally swats seven. And meanwhile, outside his window, the townspeople who are paying more attention to current events than he is are talking about this terrible giant that has come to their area and who is going to kill it. And does anybody know how to deal with giants? It's so terrible. The little tailor bursts out of his window and says, I killed seven with one blow. And the villagers think he's talking about giants. Because, yeah, people killed seven giants with one blow. So they're like, great, you're now our giant killer. And then he's taken before the king, and the king says, if you can kill this giant or send this giant away from our area, then you shall marry my daughter and become the next king. And then he has to take on this role that he is completely unprepared for, and he has to grow into this new role, this new status. So this is a coming-of-age story. It's a George and the Dragon story, Slay the Dragon, Win the Princess. If you are one of those people who wants to flip the script all the time, you can say slay the princess and win the dragon, whatever floats your boat. But the point is that you take out the evil and you reestablish goodness and justice, but you're also changing your status. And you're usually going from lower status to higher status, since that's what most of us want to do. But you can also tell the other kind of story where you fall from grace, you fall from high status into a lower status. And sometimes what you thought was higher status wasn't really a good place. And that also kind of brings us to the next kind of story, which is the man who learned better. Now, this is the classic uh, Christmas Carol story, and it doesn't, it can also be a coming of age story, but it can also be a coming of middle age story, where a character who is very well established in life and very established in their prejudices and their biases and their flaws, and they've made peace with their situation, which is not a good situation, but they're resigned to it, or they accept it, or they think it's the only way, or they think it's the right way, but there's something wrong at the heart of their universe that they're blind to. They don't see it. And so the story is about how they learn to finally see the light in this dark universe that they finally learn to see everything that they've been mistaken about and realize the truth that there's some truth they're missing and they need to overcome their ignorance and discover it. And it could be that they're living in a dystopia and they think it's a utopia and so they realize the people that I've always been taught were evil are actually good. It could be that they are like Scrooge, they have this attitude towards life about the nature of humans or whoever else is in their society it might not be humans that, you know, all people are scum. You can't trust anybody. And they learn to overcome that. It could be that you could combine it with one of the other stories. One of the examples that hein Heinlein gives is the rich man who becomes a hobo and then he realizes, wow, he's made better friends among the hobos than he ever did among the wealthy snobs, etc. It's a person who has a misconception about life, a fatal flaw, either in himself or that he's accepted in his society or his ideology or his faith in the world or lack of faith in the world, and he comes to it. Oh, and of course, all sort of conversion stories, Paul on the road to Damascus, guess that is what the is the model for this story and in the, this day and age where there are deconversion stories where somebody has been raised in a faith and then comes to realize i don't believe in that anymore that's also a person coming to the truth coming to the light story you just flipping the script it's called flipping the script where not the script written by the author but the script of life believed by the character they suddenly realize they've had everything upside down so those are the three main plots. Now in a short story, you're usually only going to deal with one, but in a novel these days, usually you want to combine at least two of those. Not always, but you can. So for instance, if you want to have a man who learned better, somebody who has a misconception about the world, you can often showcase this by having a relationship that he establishes with somebody who represents the opposite idea, the idea that he needs to embrace. Or that person could represent the idea that is the mirror image of the idea that he holds. That person could be equally wrong and both of them need to come together and meet in the middle. Your character doesn't have to be the only one in the story who changes. Another possibility is that you could have a coming-of-age story with a man who learned better. So you have a dystopia combined with a coming-of-age story, like the Hunger Games trilogy. One of my favorite romantic tropes is enemies to lovers, where two people have both been taught to hate the other's kind for some reason. It could be 
a caste thing, or it could be a nationality thing. It could be they're from warring nations or something of that nature, a Romeo and Juliet type setup. And they have to overcome that when they fall in love or they fall in love despite believing these wrong things. And so at the same time they're falling in love, they're also forced to confront the false beliefs that they hold. I love that kind of story. There's so many varieties. So whenever you see one of these things about there's only three kinds of stories, don't be discouraged by that. Just take it as a launching off point into the kind of story that you want to write. It's a way of thinking about your story in a simpler form so that you can grasp it and not so that you can box it in, but so that you have something to jump off of, like a diving board into a pool. It's going to give you that extra bounce into a whole possibility of stories. And of course, there's always different combinations and different varieties. One thing to keep in mind about the Heinlein stories, these three things, the the romance or the boy meets girl, the little tailor, the man who learned better, is that all of these are describing the inward journey of a character. The inward change to their emotional state, their emotional life, their emotional relationship to other people and that's usually not enough to carry a story. You're also going to need an outer story, their outward objective goal, the thing they think they're doing when they're learning the lesson they need to learn to live a better life. So this doesn't even touch on the outer story. The outer story can be about a gadget. It can be about a travel, travel to a foreign land or an adventure. It can be a MacGuffin story. It can be a detective story. Again, those are more like genres of stories, and this is more describing the inward journey. And you want to have both of those as elements of your novel in order to give it that complexity that really makes it cohere and click together and be unique and original. Okay, so I hope that helped a little bit to define at least three kinds of relationships that your character can have in a story. Once again, they can change relationship, change rank in relation to other people, or change status in relation to other people, start a new job. That's the second one. And the third one, they can change the idea they hold about the world. Okay, and that's all for now. Tara out.